All right, all right. So it is Monday, April 30th, 2018, and I am live on, not on Periscope tonight, because I got to find my other, um, hi, Diona, hi, Dewan, hi, Rick, what's going on? Um, I'm, uh, hi, Judy, hey, hey, everybody, thanks for joining in. So uh, this is another edition of Nightcap with Nicole Wu. Supposed to be every Monday night at 11 p.m. Central Time. Hi, Wanda. Um, and um, I got to admit, I've missed a couple Mondays. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get better at this. Hey, Vo. So I'm still uh, working out the kinks and trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. But it's been fun. It's been fun interacting with people. And hi, Tobias. What's going on, maestro? Uh, it's been exciting. It's been cool. Just uh, working out the kinks, figuring out how to do this, and always having to come up with another topic. So um, today... And I'm not sure if I can tag her or not, but um, I'll put a link to one of her pages uh, before it's all said and done. So earlier today, my friend and personal mentor, her name is Erica Coleman, and um, she's got an incredible movement, Erica Speaks Life and a company. She challenged me to go live earlier today, and I know she thinks that, um, <laughs> she probably thinks I ignored her because I didn't do it, but I, I she gave me such a cool topic, I figured I would just have that Hi, Uncle Donnie, Pastor Pastor Donnie Clyburn in New Jersey, Tons River, my home state. Um, so if you guys are in New Jersey or driving distance, you have to go to his church. He is the real deal. And um, I'm sorry I missed you this Sunday, Uncle Donnie. We stayed out for my sister's birthday. We partied all night. But um, I'm going to make it up. I'm coming to church when I come back home again in a couple of months, okay? <laughs> so, uh, hey, Harold, what's going on, sir? So anyway, my topic, she wanted me to go live and just share about why I decided to be an an entrepreneur or a mompreneur and, um, you know, what it means to me and some of the things that I want to show my children in this journey and what I want to do for them. And uh, (laughs) that's right. You're still my uncle. Love you. Hey, Monica. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So just so you know, my podcasts are always 15 minutes and then I kind of bring it to a stopping point. And after that, if you guys want to still hang out with me and talk and chat back and forth, we can do that. So I'm not going to keep you long. All right. <laughs> so um, why did I decide? First of all, what am I doing? Um, my name is Nicole Lawson. If you're on this, you already know that I'm a mompreneur. I call myself that because I'm a mom 24 eight. I have sole custody of my four children. Very grateful and proud of that. And um. I also am an entrepreneur, like 24-8. I can't separate the two, so that's why the word mompreneur. Um, You might even hear one of my children make some noise and come back downstairs again. I might have to send her butt back upstairs, even though it's 11. Hi, Kamisha. So um, for me, um, I decided that it's better for me to be an entrepreneur instead of settling for a job. And no disrespect to anybody who, if that's your path, that's your path. That's just not for me. Because number one, like I said, I have sole custody of my children. So what would happen is I would get jobs and pretty good ones with really cool benefit packages and all that stuff. But if I couldn't be If I couldn't put that job first, then I'm expendable and I can't, I can't put my job first. It's me, myself and I with my kids. So every time I get a phone call from the daycare or school or whatever, I'm not asking my boss, can I take off to go take care of my children? It's not happening. I'm going to give you a courtesy notice. I got to go. So, you know, what's going to happen with that. You know, you're going to wind up getting fired and it happened a couple of times, you know, shout out to the sisters who can keep the jobs and they have several kids and they got a good support system and all that. But that's not my story. Another reason why I was never satisfied with just staying with a job is because, you know, I'm a rebel. Maybe it's because of where I'm from. I don't know. But I'm a rebel and I'm not okay with somebody telling me how much they're going to pay me and how much I'm worth and how much my time is worth. And then also being there. And if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it good. I'm going to do things I'm passionate about. So if I'm there, you know, I want to help people. And And if I help them too much, I get in trouble, you know, or if I'm putting in a bunch of effort and I'm not getting paid for that effort. It doesn't matter if I do a good job and the person next to me gets is doing a sucky job. We get basically the same paycheck and benefits and I'm not cool with that. So I'm not saying that I won't pick up a gig from here or there, but as far as what my focus is, the job just ain't for me. Hey, what's going on? Trayvon uh, Jones playwright in the Oklahoma area. Y'all look him up. He's cool people. So, um, I started hooking up with other women who felt the same way and who work for themselves and um, who've created really cool incomes for themselves and who would just show me how to do the same thing. And it's been an incredible journey. It's been some scary moments. I have seen some cutoff notices. I actually went through a cutoff for two months 
Whew, I'll tell you that really put some fire under my behind because I will never have that happen again. So I'm not saying it's not for the faint of heart. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, but it's it's for me. I mean, knowing that I'm in control of what I make, how I make it, that nobody's going to tell me that I can't help somebody too much or I can't say this or I can't talk about God on my job and put the restrictions on me. That's really important. Um, so what do I do? One of the things that I do, aside from what you probably already know, which is singing and um, acting, is I decided to open up my own travel agency. And before I go any further, I'm not going to take this into no business presentation. So don't get all, you know, don't start jumping off and thinking I'm trying to sell you because I'm not. I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that I do and why. So I have a lot of friends who travel. I love to travel. I'm from the East Coast. Definitely. I just went back there this weekend. Still on a high from that. And I figured, you know, I have so many friends, um, you know, friends who are, you know, musicians and producers, and blah, blah, blah. And they're always going places. And then, of course, being an actor, you know, there are opportunities for me to have to fly different places for auditions. And then, of course, other actors I come across, they're always traveling. So it made sense for me to get involved in that industry especially since it's like, you know, it was very minimal cost. I think it's like 20 bucks a month or something to keep up my website. Um, the training was like quick and easy and uh, everybody knows how to book their own travel. So, hey, what's going on, Grace? Thanks for logging in. So I basically learned how to, um, you know, book travel as a travel agent, look for the best deals, things like that, and basically do it for my friends and family. And um, it doesn't really get on their nerves because I'm not like beating down their door and begging them to buy something from me. They're doing it anyway. So they just do it through me. Really cool commission. When I travel like this weekend, because I'm a travel agent, my ticket was like 50 bucks to Philly and 50 bucks back. I mean, you can't beat that. So it was an industry I decided to get into because um, I needed to do something that made sense for me that still made good money. And um, the other thing, what was the other? Let me check that text. So I got challenged to talk about what I do and why. Uh, the other thing was for me to talk about why, let's see, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I want to show my children as a single mom. (laughs) So I'm kind of doing some homework and you guys are watching it. So as a single mom, what do I want to show my children? I want to show them that, um, you can basically do have, be whatever you want to do, have and be. Um, hi, you guys, my godfather's on. What's up, Tom? Um, So it's important for me to show them that it's important for me to show them that no matter where you are in life, that you don't give up because I'm, I've been through things and I've experienced things. You guys have had two divorces, um, that hi, what's going on, Mr. Montgomery, the hood doctor (laughs) in his house. So, um, I've experienced things that other people in my position could not cope with. Um, or that they would make them just kind of like, you know, give up and choose like the typical baby mama route. So, um, I just, I couldn't go out like that. You know, I have three daughters that are watching me. It doesn't matter what mistakes I made in the past or how I got myself into the single mom position and struggling and all that stuff in the past. I felt like that was even more of a challenge for me to show them that no matter where you end up in life, that you can create a different path. You don't have to settle for mediocrity. You don't have to settle for the struggle. I hate that term. The struggle is real, whatever. My dreams and my goals are, are, are realer. My God is realer than the struggle. So whatever. So, um, that was, you know, also what I wanted to show my kids. Like I have to show them that, you know, you can have better, you can, you can not just dream and talk about better, but you can do better. You can have better, you can be better. And I feel like entrepreneurship is the way to do that. I don't want to train my children to just make good grades, go to college and get a good job. And then, you know, retire at maybe 50 or 60 and then still got to go get another job and just work a job the rest of their life. I don't personally believe that we're, that we were ever created to be on this earth to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week and still be struggling, but maybe struggling on different levels. And don't let anybody fool you because I've made 20,000 and I've been in a household where me and the partner made, you know, closer to 100. I'll say that. (laughs) And that's not rich, but I mean, it's comfortable. So I'll say this. People struggle on different levels. So if you got a job and you're making 60, 80, 100, even two, three, four, you know, everybody struggles on different levels. Unless you're owning that stuff, you don't have there's not that much freedom, because if they stop doing that job, even if they like own a job, if they stop going 
to, I don't know, cut the lawns or work on somebody's body or whatever. Like that's not residual income. They stop doing that work. The money stops coming in. And when the money stops coming in, guess what? They knocked right back down to everybody else's struggle. I don't want that for myself. I don't, I need to have income that when I'm going to sleep, you know, this weekend. And I mean, it's just a little bit. I'm not there yet. I'm not where I want to be yet, but it felt so good to be out partying with my sister on a yacht in New York and look up at my phone, which I know she got mad at me for looking, but I'm like, girl, it's money. I'm a look. Okay. It's money, (laughs) but it felt good to be looking at my phone and to see, you know, one person just you know, purchase something or another person just, you know, send an email requesting information. That's dope. Like I want that. That's why I decided to be a mompreneur because I want that money in your sleep that where you do think something one or two times and you keep getting paid for it and you keep getting paid for it. That's what I love about music. You know, I was surprised with a check the other day for like a thousand bucks. And again, I'm not saying that I'm where I want to be yet. I'm still, you know, on the climb. But it was so dope to know that some music that I wrote over 10 years ago, that I'm still getting paid for that music. I did that one time and I put it out to a couple of places. So those little things right there show me that I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right thing. Still learning. I'm still growing all that kind of stuff. But I mean, if you know that you could do better, if you know that there's a better way, why would you want to follow the masses? Yeah, I'm spoiled. No, I don't want a job. And that's why I'm not. Please, please. I'm not trying to do what the 80 percent are doing because I, I don't want to just be a consumer. I don't I want to be a producer in life. I want to be the one that is not going to the building every day. I want to be the one that created the building that the other people are going to. So that's me. And I'm crazy. And I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And it drives a lot of people nuts. And that's okay. If it drives you nuts, it's because it makes you uncomfortable and it's probably making you look at yourself (laughs) and reevaluate what reevaluate what you're doing. Hey, that's what I was put here for. Some people were put here to ruffle your feathers. And that is me. (laughs) I'm going to get all up in your face with it. Um, And (laughs) um, I know there was one argument one time with a partner in the past. And it kind of tickles me to this day because he was so mad at something that was kind of little. I want what I want. I'm not going to I'm not going to reduce my taste to make you feel comfortable. So it's a certain kind of chocolate that I love. And he knows that. So don't bring me no Hershey bar if you know I love whatever that was. And he would get mad and be like, how come you can't just settle for what I can get in the grocery store? Nah, Negro, you're going to have to go the extra mile for this one right here. I'm not easy. (laughs) I'm not easy. So, again, that's another reason why I chose the path I chose. I'm not I don't want the regular stuff. I, it, that's just not me. I'm not satisfied with that. And I'm no longer going to apologize for not being satisfied with what I'm not being satisfied with. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm spoiled. I don't want a job. I want residual income. I want that money in my sleep. Yes. Right. You have to come to a place of leave This allows you to jump. I spent too many years. Y'all, I'm 34 years old and I look at all the shoulda, couldas and would have of, of my life. And how far along I could have been had I stopped being afraid and listening to other people. Let me tell you something. If that person that's giving you advice, look at their life, look at their house, look at their job and everything else. If they don't have what you have, why would you listen to that? I was listening to people whose life I wouldn't even want to trade for. Time out for that. Time out for that. I'm not following that path anymore. So if that makes me spoiled or even entitled, I don't care. (laughs) This is my testimony. Um. Let's see. I think my 15 minutes is about done. This is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it for the podcast at this point. Bring Godiva. That's right. That's one of them. I do love me some Godiva, but I found out some things about them recently about the factories and stuff. So I guess it's time for me to step it up again when it comes to my chocolate taste. Cause I'm, mm. <laughs> but yeah, but seriously, if that's yeah, girl, my Osha, we can go on and on about that later on another time. But yeah, seriously, like leap. There's no point in continuing to live life afraid, um, stuck on other people's opinions. Um, If you're not satisfied with something, you don't have to apologize for that. You do. You are allowed to want more. You're allowed to ask for more. You're allowed to demand more of yourself and everybody else around you. You are allowed to go for more. You only get one life. So why settle? Like that word is no longer in my vocabulary. I'm not settling. I don't feel comfortable telling my children no, 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 because it's something I can't afford. F that. 
I'm not going to tell them no because I can't afford it. She said, "Uh oh, (laughs) if I'm looking at it and I can't afford it and they want it and I want it. So now it's up to me. The challenge is on me now not to just say no. Forget that. I'm not going to teach them to settle and be satisfied with less than what they want. So now I'm challenged and I'm glad. 